Hello, everyone. Because of flower, I can smell. It is really pleasing to smell this. In due time, flower blossoms. What about the corona pandemic? This time, it is really lingering. As the prayer was offered, we are really looking for that day that we can come together and worship together. Please keep your faith and have a victory in Christ. These days, something makes me sad. In the Korean history, we also had a very sad history. We had a coup before. And right now, it is happening in Myanmar. It is really, really sad to see what is happening in Myanmar. One person's desire and passion made this. It is really, really sad to see all of this. I pray that all of you, Burmese, all the people in Myanmar, please keep the faith and keep safe. And we had actually doctor who came to this Seronam New Star Center. She is from Myanmar, and she was so inspired as she learned. She made a Zoom meeting, and then we participated, and then actually we had seminars for Burmese. As you see on the right side, in the middle, she is the person, Dr. Tuile. I really pray that she will be okay, and I really pray that God will protect them all. This is a testimony from her. As a missionary, I have been trained in so many training seminars. 제가 그 리오 선교사로서 많은 곳에서 제가 이렇게 어, 지도함을 받고 배우게 되었습니다. I was served uh, for like 15 years in the service. 제가 14년 동안 이 일을 하게 되었고, as a junior health director. 그리고 또한 그 연합회의 그 보건부장으로 일을 했습니다. So we had to go to the different countries to have a seminar. 그래서 제가 그 직임을 training. 맡으면서 많은 나라를 방문했고 그리고 세미나도 들었고 훈련도 받았고 and observe some kind of sanitarians. 그리고 또 이런 이런 뉴스타트 요양원 같은 걸또 많이 보게 되었습니다. But I want to say that what I learned, I don't want to say what I learned is not useful. 제가 이렇게 말씀드리고 싶지는 않습니다. 제가 그동안 배운 것이 다 불필요한 것이다라고 말씀드리고 싶지는 않지만, they are hands, feet. 제 배운 것이 꼭 사람은 몸으로 말하면은 팔을 팔, 뭐 다리 이런 걸 배운 것 같습니다. But I finally got the head here. 근데 이곳에 와서 이 머리가 뭔지를 배운 것 같습니다. I got the point. 제가 핵심을 알게 되었습니다. I got the key. 그리고 제가 열쇠가 뭔지를 알게 되었습니다. I got the root. 그리고 제가 그 뿌리가 무엇인지를 알게 되었습니다. Thank you, Seronam. 세로남에 대해서 정말 감사드립니다. For a kind environment and a Atmosphere. 이 사랑과 이 친절의 이런 분위기 너무나 감사드립니다. Your hospitality. 그리고 이렇게 친절한 마음. And generosity. 그리고 너무 너그러운 마음. God, may God continue to bless each one of you here in Seronam. 하나님께서 이곳에 있는 새로남에 있는 you. 모든 분들을 계속 축복해 주시기를 바랍니다. As she shared, she said that she learned the head, right? And then she actually planned the Zoom seminar. As we received the grace of God, it depends on us how we move forward. 
the next step is very important. God blesses most of the people, a lot of people. It depends on us how we are taking it. Do you know what kind of tree it is? It is called mangrove. It is actually living in the water. I have no idea how they are living. Probably it has a lot of salt, salty water, right? In order to get rid of this salt, and then the tree itself falls off its leaves. They are living in the water. But what about this tree? It is in the desert. How could it this happen? Because every tree has a different features. Some trees are living in the water, some in the desert. What if we move them? They probably die. Just like that, each one of us has our own character and personality. Character is one of the attributes or features that make up and distinguish an individual. And it is used with adjectives such as strong, hard, weak, relaxed. Number two, personality is a quality or state of being a person. It is used with the, such as optimistic, cheerful, strong. So there are characters and personality in each one of us. So each one of us has a different character, different personality. What about this tree? It is living in the desert. It observes water during the raining season and it keeps living during the dry season. So we, each one of us, have our own personality. So we can live either in the water or in the desert. We have our own conscience, our own personality. In matters of conscience, the soul must be left untrammeled. No one is to control another's mind, to judge for another, or to prescribe his duty. God gives to every soul freedom to think and to follow his own convictions. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. No one has a right to merge his own individuality in that of another. In all matters where principle is involved, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So this means someone should not control somebody. This is the beginning of the misery. Sometimes we have people who come to this place and then we see again and again someone tries to control somebody. So please do not. We should not control other people. Yes, those who are controlled, yes, damage. Also those who are controlled are also damaged. What about the house, home life? A woman and a man come together and then they sometimes they date. Before they get married, they need to see each other, what kind of personality they have. Is a love which he expresses of a noble, elevated character? Or is it a mere emotional fondness? Has it the traits of a character that will make her happy? Can she find the true peace and joy in his affection? Will she be allowed to preserve her individuality? Or must her judgment and conscience be surrendered to the control of her husband? So usually the stronger controls the weaker, and that means it is the beginning of a misery. Even when they get married, the same thing would happen. If one spouse tried to control another, then unhappiness would begin. Neither the husband nor the wife should merge his or her individuality in that of the other. Each has a personal relation to God.
of him each is to ask what is right, what is wrong, how may I best fulfill life's purpose, let the wealth of your affection flow forth to him who gave his life for you. Each one of us has a different background, different individuality. These days, uh, there are like nine ways, nine ways to, to see about our individuality or intellectual intelligence. Dr. Garner made this. So it is called integration. So each one of us has a different individuality. Some people have a very good at smelling, or some people are very good at tasting or feeling. When they choose their own job, they will be successful according to their own uh, strength. In foreign countries, luxurious restaurants and hotels are recommending water that matches the food ordered by customers. Eating fish, they recommend water with a lot of minerals. And eating steak, they recommend carbonated water to wash away the greasy taste. If you have an absolute taste, I highly recommend the water sommelier challenge. Because there are some people who can who are very good at tasting even water. What about sounding? I'm a magician who makes all the sounds of the world, a poly artist. In addition to the voices of actors, various sound effects, such as the sound of opening and closing the door, the sound of footsteps and the sound of rain appear in the movie, but can you believe that these sound effects are made by someone, not the actual sound? Each one of us had a different individuality and talents. So even when I was young, I am very good at hearing something sounding. And my family members could not hear, but I was the only one who could hear that. And I said, oh, auntie is coming. And everybody was so surprised because I was the only one who could hear that sound. But as I was growing up, I was not trained. When I was in a military service, my nickname was a Sharp because I was so good at, you know, picking up somebody's faults or weaknesses. And then... Sometimes, you know, my colleagues in the military service uh, call me Sharp. Look at that. Sharp is coming. It was my nickname because I was ready to attack with the, somebody's weakness and uh, faults. I did not know that my, this uh, area is actually very bad trait. But after I became to know God, I realized it is not God. So every time when I saw, I realized that I should get rid of it. And my actually, my bad habit was changed into good habit. When I was guided by the Holy Spirit, then I was very good at But when I was not guided by the Holy Spirit, I just was so hard on other people. So let's say, oh, I have many talents. It doesn't mean that we are really good people. But if we are actually controlled by the enemy, our talents could be very weapon. But if we are held by God, God will take us to have a better character. Our character plus God's guidance, then we will have a very noble character. However, if we are not guided by the Lord, then it will be used to hurt other people.
They are one in purpose, in mind, in character, but not in person. It is thus that God and Christ are one. They are one in purpose, in mind, in character, but not in person. Their work is different, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but their character is the same. They have the same mind, but they have a different personality. What about Jesus? What about when Jesus comes into us, what does He do for us? The unity that exists between Christ and His disciples does not destroy the personality of either. They are one in purpose, in mind, in character, but not in person. Those who trust, those who believe in God, have the different personality. Their personalities still remain, but their character are being changed. When Jesus saves us and He helps us to know Him, what is the next step? Yes, the change of our character. It's not about the change of a personality. Yes, we have a very individual personality, but if we are guided by the Holy Spirit, it will be beautiful. However, if our character is the same, it's not changed, then we will be hurting other people. When Jesus came to this earth, He healed so many people. There were many stories in the Bible. One of them was Mary Magdalene. She was a demon possessed. She was crazy. She was caught in adultery, sin. So many people tried to stone her, but Jesus saved her. As He sent her, He said, John 8, verse 11, she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Why did Jesus say this? Go and sin no more. She was saved. She had been in darkness. She was a slave by the enemy, but she was saved. But how come Jesus said to her, Go and sin no more? This was an amazing miracle that He did, He performed for her. In the uplifting of this fallen soul, Jesus performed a greater miracle than in healing the most grievous physical disease. He cured the spiritual malady, which is unto death everlasting. This penitent woman became one of his most steadfast followers. With self-sacrificing love and devotion, she repaid his forgiving mercy. She was saved. So now, she could say, okay, I will just enjoy my life. No. Because if she did not forget what Jesus did for her, if she remembered the grace, and she resembled the character of Christ, Jesus showed her so much interest, and she began to repay Jesus' love. There are so many people who came to this place and they were healed. And then they learn other places, but at this time, when they came here, they learned the key. This is what we need to do. We also need to go out and we need to share. Otherwise, we would be in the darkness again. That's why Jesus said, sin no more. Because the Lord has graciously healed you, you must not think you can link yourselves up with the self-indulgent practices of the world. Do as Christ commanded after His work of healing. Go and sin no more. Appetite must not be your God. Now your stomach has been healed, please don't say, okay, I want to eat whatever I want. No, please don't. 
Please have the right lifestyle. And she, Mary Magdalene, began to change. I was so inspired by the lesson of Mary Magdalene when she went to the house of Simon. What did she do? She poured out the precious oil on Jesus' head. And she kissed his feet. This is the most noble action that a servant do to his master. Matthew 26, 13 Oh, surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. The action of Mary Magdalene was different. She does not forget the grace that she received. Jesus was about to die. She already prepared a funeral service for Jesus. She kept her personality, but her character had been changed. And she did the most novel thing, novel action for Jesus. She wanted to repay. She did not have a lot of money. She could not even repay all for what Jesus did to her. She showed Jesus how much she was so grateful. I was so touched as I read this story. In the past, I had no idea why so many people were so different. Some people met Jesus and they had so much passion, but some people, they just, you know, began to lose as much as we are forgiven, we are changed. When Jesus spoke about this to this woman, I began to realize, Luke 7, verse 47, Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. How come so many people love him so much, but the, some people love him little? Why? What if we do not have a, a lot of love for Jesus? Because we are not forgiven yet. We are just maybe experiencing just a little bit. Let's just experience deeply. Then we will be on fire. Everybody is a different. Every character is a different. Everybody has a different personality. But when we are led by the Holy Spirit, although we are all different, but our character will be changed. Personality and their own character, no matter how much they learn, the character might be so low. But what about those who are educated less? If their character is so noble, then they will be great. Strength of a character consists of two things, power of a will and power of self-control. Many youth mistake a strong, uncontrolled passion for strength of a character. But the truth is that he who is mastered by his passions is a weak man. The real greatness and nobility of the man is measured by the power of the feelings that he subdues, not by the power of the feelings that subdue him. What changes the character? When the Word of God comes into us, this is our will, whether we pursue it or not. When the Word of God comes into us, we use it to restrain something. So, strength of a character consists of two things, power of a will and power of self-control. But we need to meet this in our life. Anger control disorder. You know, some people have no problem 
to manage or to control the anger. But some people are controlled by their own anger. That means Satan is constantly playing with that person. Even the little things as we call upon God, as we receive the word of God, and our character will be changed every event. Every small event in our life, if we surrender, then our character will be changed. Every act of life, however unimportant, has its influence in forming the character. A good character is more precious than worldly possessions, and the work of forming it is the noblest in which man can engage. Every act of life. However unimportant, we have an opportunity to practice. So there was a paralytic at Bethesda. You know the story, right? After Jesus healed this paralytic, the Jews, the leaders, were making so much trouble and Jesus just uh, disappeared and then one day he met this paralytic at the temple John 5 verse 14 afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him see you have been made well sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you Jesus said the same thing to Mary Magdalene right and he said the same thing to this paralytic sin no more why did Jesus say this? Why? How come Jesus did not say this sentence to the paralytic when he was at Bethesda, but he said later? Apparently, Jesus sought out the man, for the spiritual impact of the healing had not yet been brought to bear upon him. Although the larger purpose of the miracle seems to have been to show the Jews the meaninglessness of their traditions, Jesus did not neglect the salvation of the one whom he had made whole. The healing of the body could be sin, right? But the more important thing was a spiritual healing. After his body was healed, now Jesus wanted to put the novel character on the person. The bigger salvation, salvation toward the eternal life. So this healing of the body is the beginning of this long journey. There are so many people who actually who were healed in their body, but sooner or later, many of them, they would lost. As I had Indonesian meetings, I had it in my mind. Do not go on sinning. Jesus directed the man's mind from his physical well-being to his need of a spiritual hygiene. His response at Bethesda to Jesus' injunction, rise, take up thy bed, and walk, had been one of faith, the beginning of a spiritual as well as a physical health. Because when Jesus healed us, then what? We need to get up and have more faith in Jesus. But most of us, we just give up. So many people, so many people came to this place and were healed. They were so glad. But when they go back to their house, what happened? They usually go back to their original life. When we had the meeting for Indonesian people, I realized so many things. There was uh, one of the leaders who planned this in Indonesia. So people, they had to register. So when I had meeting about more than 160 joined the, the program. One of the leaders came to Seronam New Stars Center with the, his wife and they brought their two children. 
Rudolf and Sunita. No, she was very weak when she came, and she even could not walk when we went to the park because she was suffered by blood disease, and she was a professor, but she could not walk. And then we went to um like a, a flea market, and she was trying to get some clothes. And we had a meeting. We had a Q&A session. But at the time, it was so obvious that both of them were so sick. Look at her. She looks so pale. She was listening to lectures. Slowly, slowly, she was getting better. She began to be healed. And she made up her mind, once I go back to my country, she was working as a professor, but she said, I'm not going to work as a professor anymore, but I'm going to run this kind of health ministry. When she said that, I could not believe it. But actually, she kept her word. So a few days ago, look at her face right now. On the right side, when she was here, she completely changed. She doesn't forget the grace of God. She keeps applying the lessons that she learned from God. She was one of the leaders for IYC. So many people participated. They prepare so well, and even our media team have learned a lot. They prepare the poster, because there are so many people participated. You know some people come to this place, they learn, but they did not do anything. But she learned and she planned. This is their theme song. yaitu uh, Mr. Kim Yonggun dengan judul The True Cause of Addiction and Be Free From It. Uh, 
I'm very happy to see all of you today. Saya sangat berbahagia untuk melihat kita semua pada malam hari ini. Nah, di Korea saat ini masih cukup uh, dingin. Saya rasa di Indonesia masih sangat hangat ya, cukup panas. Nah, jadi ini adalah beberapa ahli yang mengatakan tentang kecanduan. Ya untuk uh, beratus-ratus tahun kita mengasi, uh, menyanyikan lagu-lagu kasih pada orang-orang yang kecanduan. They had planned so well. Some people are not doing this ministry, but some people are working like this, trying to save a lot of people. So our habits are changed every day, one by one. This is a Chinese character, habit. Like a young bird practicing flapping its wings, repeating it every day, getting used to it as if it was tied to the heart. Like a young bird practicing flapping its wings every day. As we have our own personality, but we need to also have a better, noble character. Does actions repeated form habits? Habits form character. And by the character, our destiny for time and for eternity is decided. Every day, every action, our reactions become habits, becomes our character. Just like a jewel is polished, our character should be polished. This is a diamond. It is very, very expensive. I want to buy this for my wife, but I need a little more money. I don't think I can buy it for her on earth. Maybe I will buy it when we go to heaven. What about you? It's more like a $10 million. It is expensive on earth, but what about in heaven? It is moral worth that God values. A Christian character unblotted with the various, possessing quietness, meekness, and humility is more precious in his sight than the most fine gold, even the golden wedge of or fire. Character we practice every day will be the most precious thing when we go to heaven. How do we value our character? How do we practice our character? We become like sunflowers. Day by day, we look up to God. We learn of God means we learn of His character. To learn of Christ means to receive His grace, which is His character. It's not about self-righteousness, but we learn of His character. We are living in the last days. So many people are talking about the last day events. Like a, it is called BTJ in Korea. It is one of the Back to Jesus. BTJ has making a lot of problems in Korea right now. During the pandemic, one of the leaders said, a CEO of an intercorp church with the BTJ Center. Choi Paul had spread a conspiracy theory that COVID-19 has been planned to make the new world order in the midst of the cluster of COVID-19 in that group. So he's spreading the rumor that if we get vaccinations, we would get something and then we would get like a 666. And that is why so many people do not want to get these vaccines. Somebody sent me a video clip about this. It was made, it was all made. This is a conspiracy theory. And does it truly, does this vaccine, 666? This is so 
funny, isn't it? God has his mark, and the beast has its mark. What about God's mark? And what about the beast's mark? Is it vaccination? That's why people do not want to get it. It is spreading right now, this rumor. God gives us so much knowledge through the Bible. God says, why are you living on this earth? You need to resemble my character. This is my mark. What about the mark of the beast? When we choose the opposite, not God's side. But right now, just uh, there is a confusion. And now people just want to go to heaven without getting a vaccination because they believe that this is the mark of the beast. Those who are uniting with the world are receiving the worldly mold and preparing for the mark of the beast. Those who are distrustful of self, who are humbling themselves before God and purifying their souls by obeying the truth, these are receiving the heavenly mold and preparing for the seal of God in their foreheads. When the decree goes forth and the stamp is impressed, their character will remain pure and spotless for eternity. The purpose of God, please resemble my character, receive my character. But these days, the rumor is spreading out that the vaccination is a mark of the beast. No, it's is confusion. Unless we know the truth, we will be all confused. What should we do? Every day, we need to look at our character and then we need to follow him. A few days ago, there was a rich man who was killed. Olivier de Salt died in a helicopter crash. He was 69 years old. He was a conservative politician and the son of a Dassault, who was the owner of the Dassault Group. Forbes magazine estimated the assets of him approximately 76 billion. French Dassault Group includes aircraft, manufacturer Dassault, aviation, software company Dassault Systems, military supplies, and Figaro newspaper, etc. He was truly rich, but he was killed. What about his money then? Should we just go and then ask for his money? He just suddenly died. Those who were healed from this place, how come, instead of resembling the character of God, how come they try to make show off themselves and they try to have their own self-righteousness? A few days ago, another person also was killed. He was uh, flying, and he was on top of a mountain, and he was actually skiing from the top of the mountain. Membership was very, very expensive, so only the rich people could do that. It must be so fun, right, to ski? And then as he was going up to a mountain, he was killed by the accident. On the evening of the 27th at 6.35 p.m., the helicopter Eurocopter AS-50 was in an accident while heading to Todillo Mountain Lodge. The helicopter crashed near Nick Glacier, 80 kilometers east of Anchorage. Five people died, and one was seriously injured in the accident. Pastor Keller, the richest man in the Czech Republic, is reportedly among the dead. Keller is a billionaire financier with a fortune of $17 billion in the 2020 Forbes ranking. He was really rich, but suddenly he died. We have no idea when to die. The mark of the beast 666, the character of Jesus, if we try to assemble 
the character of Jesus, then if we die, yes, that's okay. However, if we are pursuing our own goal in the world, what will happen to us? I've seen so many people. There are so many people who came to this place and have been healed. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they are not doing. They say, okay, I am healed now. I want to enjoy as much as I want. So as I had this Indonesian program, I was so grateful to the leaders. So uh, we are planning another English program. I have no idea how many people will join. It is a something to die, but a far more something to live. Every thought and word and deed of our lives will meet us again. What we make of ourselves in probationary time that we must remain to all eternity. Death brings a dissolution to the body but makes no change in the character. The coming of Christ does not change our character. It only fixes them forever beyond all change. It is a something to die, but a far more something to live. During this time on earth, we are to make this. While we live on this earth, we need to treasure in heaven. How? Forming our own character by God's grace. Character is a great harvest of life, and every word or deed that through the grace of Christ shall kindle in one's soul an impulse that reaches heavenward. Every effort that tends to the formation of a Christ-like character is laying up treasure in heaven. Is laying up treasure in heaven. My prayer, my sincere prayer, all of you, as you received the grace of God from now on, please, laying up this treasure in heaven. If you receive grace from heaven, please do not ignore it. For the rest of your life, as you do this work, it will be so priced. I pray that all of you will gain victory in God. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for helping us so that we will not forget the grace of God. The world is so dark and it's going astray. Please hold us up and help us to look up to heaven. Help us to lay up treasure in heaven. Thank you, Lord. We have no idea that this kind of pandemic will come to us. We have no idea how much we will live. So from now on, we really want to have the right life in you. You permitted this pandemic. You said, Arise and look up heaven. Help us, O Lord, not to focus on the trivial, unnecessary stuff. But help us, O Lord, to focus our eyes on you, on the precious things that we are supposed to do. You have given your grace to so many people. You have healed so many people. And many people are healed. But when they look back their lives, as we see them fail, as we see them go astray, it really makes us so sad. Please grant us another opportunity so that we will have a new life once again in you. Please, O oh Lord, take away this pandemic as soon as possible so that we will meet again our brothers and sisters and worship together. Please keep us, O Lord. Grant us your Holy Spirit. Grant us your comfort. Help us not to forget your grace. So that when we meet again, help us to meet in joy and peace. 
There are people, church members, who are so faithfully giving back in tithe and offerings. Please bless them. Guide them. Bless them abundantly so that they will be more faithful to you. Thank you so much for saving us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.